Welcome to Project C Part 2. We began by defining what abortion is all about. And of course this game that they play with talking about the need of safe abortion. And of course the summary from Robertson William was and is, which is the truth, that abortion just has one goal and that is to kill the preborn. We're talking about today's modern pharaoh who kills through abortion and calls it women's empowerment. Speaking of which, it's important for us to understand what it is that they actually call women empowerment by pushing the so-called reproductive health rights. Do not be fooled. That term in itself carries abortion in it. And it's something that they're pushing into our doors, literally in Africa. Kenya, for example, where I am, we are now fighting a bill that was tabled by Kihika, known as the Kihika Reproductive Health Rights Bill. And you can imagine what it is all about. They try to sugarcoat it, try to fool people that that is not the main thing, but that is exactly what they are about. As we speak, we have Maristops operating in Kenya. I was surprised when I did my research that the National Health Fund actually funds them. The NHIF covers their services. And you know where corruption is. All these things, all these crazy things, all those procedures are paid for. They pay tax here in Kenya. So that tells you that we are operating on very dangerous grounds. Our call and our appeal to you is to rise up in defense of the preborn. Not only for them, but also for yourselves and for future generations. Because you know where blood is shed? Judgment is called upon. And it's not going to be a good thing. So who are the faces behind the eugenics? Because that is what it is. You've heard of Mary Stops. We want to delve a little bit into understanding and knowing who Mary Stops was. And we also want to know the brains, wicked brains behind the Planned Parenthood, another woman also known as Margaret Sanger. All that will be detailed as we continue to have our conversations and our inputs with William Otto. Thank you, Wavinia. Today is the 26th of December, day after Christmas. And I'm really, I have to be honest with you, I, I'm really asking God to direct my words as I respond to this, because what you, the subject that we're raising, that you've raised, is so momentous, so important, so vital. And, you know, none of us know when tomorrow whether we have tomorrow at all. As Jesus said in one of his parables about the man who had the barns and was building new barns, uh, he said, oh, you, you foolish man, this day your life will be required of you. So it's really incumbent upon us if we, if we acknowledge the Holy Trinity, if we acknowledge that God is truth the spirit of truth the holy spirit is the spirit of truth and the holy spirit is god and there are no lies in god god cannot lie because lying is not capacity lying is a defect and god is perfect he tells the truth he is the truth he is the truth if there's any lies it's because people have blinded themselves and have chosen those lies, but God is the truth incarnate and love incarnate. So, as we talk about these horrible things and these horrible persons like Mary Stopes, Margaret Sanger, I'm asking God for the courage to speak the truth that I know. And I want to confess to you now, Wavinia, and to anyone else who's, who's listening here, forgive me, please, I've held back. 
in the past. I saw that just yesterday you left the Pro Family Africa group founded by Ann Kiyoko. You left it for the second or third time. And I'm thinking I'd like to leave it too, because I have a lot of respect for you, Wavinia, and I'm not sure I want to be in that group. If, if you don't want to be in that group, um, I'm not sure there's any point. But I was promoting, regarding Marie Stopes, I was promoting a, an article on projectc.com, which you can find there. Uh, you could Google the racist results or the racist, let's see, the racist roots, the racist roots of Mary Stopes. If you Google that, presently, who knows when Google will censor it, but presently, if you Google that, I think you'll find the article. But if you go to projectc.com, that's for Project S-E-E -E for Stop Exporting Evil, projectc.com, and you click on the picture of Marie Stopes kissing Adolf Hitler. She was a fan of Adolf Hitler. She wrote love letters to Adolf Hitler. But this article by Regan Odiambo on our website details, with references, the racist roots of Marie Stopes. But really, there's no controversy. In fact, in just the past month, Murray Stopes International changed their name to MSI International to distance themselves from the racist roots of Murray Stopes. And to be perfectly honest with you, Regan Odiambo is, in fact, a pen name. It's actually a, um, a name created by Project C to obscure a British author who originally wrote the article, and that article was up for years, The Racist Roots of Marie Stopes, the same article we have at projectc.com. And eventually the article was taken down because the eugenics and the materialist movement in the West became so strong that the Catholic author of that article, I won't say his name now, um, reached a point in his business in the United Kingdom that he could not afford to have his name associated with the truth that he had written in that article. That's how bad things have gotten. On the 26th of December right now, 2020, I'm in Montana, Kalispell, Montana, Montana up in the mountains uh, with snow on the ground in the uh, right next to the Glacier National Park, so way up in the mountains. And right now, Donald Trump is still contesting the presidential election, which was stolen from him, the U.S. presidential election, because of the, the many, many, many lies and obfuscations and deceit that has snowballed in the Western countries. We, in other words, everywhere we look, to the left, Look right, look up, look down, there's lies. Here's lies, there's lies. Everywhere we look, the boys don't know their boys. The girls don't know their girls. There's transgenderism, transsexuality, um, the increasing normalization of pederasty, pedophilia, child abuse is what it really is, uh, so-called homosexuality. What am I getting at? I'm claiming to you and to anyone who can hear my voice that the current confusion, whether it's the, the lying election results, the confusion about sexuality, uh, the economic confusion, the, the, the dollar hegemony where, where people are printing fiat currencies and, the, and it means nothing. No one knows what the paper in their wallet or the digital money in their bank account is supposedly worth from day to day. The confusion is lies, layered upon lies, layered upon lies, economically, economically, spiritually, with reference to the family, which is the real economy, and that builds the greater economies. What am I driving at? We in the West are surrounded by and characterized by lies. Lies have always been around, but at the root of these lies is the teaching in Romans 1. What does God do? If you read Romans chapter 1, very clearly it says that because we failed to acknowledge God, the Creator, as the Creator, He has turned us 
over to a reprobate mind to worship the created thing instead of the creator. That's what we've done. In the 19th century, people did so, and as the 20th century came about, we started to eat the fruits of our abandonment of the Creator, who, by His grace, we built Western civilization, and in our apostasy, the bastards of Western civilization, the illegitimate children of Western civilization in the 20th century, repudiated God, and now here we are in the 21st century, Wavinia, dealing with the fruit of people who lived at the turn of the 19th century into the 20th century. Specifically, we're talking about two women, Margaret Sanger and Marie Stopes. So I won't even attempt, plenty of scholarship has uh, been proffered and is there, it's widely available as to who these people were. I won't attempt a biography of Margaret Sanger or Marie Stopes, but they were contemporaries. Marie Stopes was the British version of Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger was married to a, a Jewish, I believe he was a banker, I'm not sure his occupation, but a, but a powerful a Jewish man, but she herself was a Gentile who was uh, one of many children and was very bitter about being uh, raised in a large family. But let me cut to the chase. Marie Stopes and Marie Sanger were witches. Now, in the group that I have mentioned, one of the groups, the WhatsApp group called Pro Family Africa, founded by Ann Kiyoko, one of the rules is that we're not supposed to talk about the um, things that are said in the group outside the group. So I'm breaking that rule now because I don't care anymore. So if they want to kick me out of the group, they can kick me out of the group. I care more about telling the truth than I do about kicking, being kicked out of that WhatsApp group. What I'm telling you is that Margaret Sanger, the founder of International Planned Parenthood Federation and every incarnation of Planned Parenthood, the founder of Planned Parenthood was a witch. That's what she was. And it is our secularization it is our secularization that prevents us from fighting these forces of evil because we are embarrassed to, to say words like Satan, witch, witchcraft, warlock, sorcery. We're embarrassed to say those words. And the fact that, and what makes us embarrassed? It's the materialism that overtook the university system the intellectual, intellectual community, even as they were diving into uh, spiritism and spiritualism and seances in the late 19th century, they were rejecting the Christian worldview. They were legalizing women's suffrage. The first wave of feminism uh, was uh, sweeping across Western society and People try to redeem that first wave fem feminism, but I'm telling you, it is irredeemable. We are living in the fruits of first wave feminism, specifically, and there's no accident that, that I'm calling it the fruits. Just like the fruit in the Garden of Eden, who did Satan appro approach first? Satan approached our mother, Eve, first. It's not by accident. It's not by accident because he knew Adam was the head and he knew Adam had heard directly from God and it was not possible for him to deceive Adam in the way that he deceived Eve because God never created Eve first to be the head, to overrule Adam. It was completely incorrect. That is why first wave feminism is evil. And so the fruit of first wave feminism and of women's suffrage ultimately is the sexual confusion and the abortion and the contraceptives and the normalization of contraceptives, which have always been around since biblical times. Look at the story of Onan in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. We won't go into it now, but they've been around always. But for the first time, at least since the advent of Christian history in 2000 years, they've been normalized in the past 250 years in Western societies, really in the past 100 years. And the normalization of contraceptives, 
the advent of first wave, now second wave, now third wave feminism have all gone hand in hand with the genocide of the preborn. So what I'm saying is that Margaret Sanger was a witch. She hated being born in a large family. She was a pioneer in eugenics, which is the, the pseudoscience that seeks to uh, cull the human herd and eliminate uh, what they have determined and have decided are supposedly uh, the undesirables, the, those people within the human herd who should not be allowed to reproduce. So. I don't want to go on and on about this. Let me be careful and clear and precise and to the point and tell you Margaret Singer hated African people. She hated anyone who didn't conform to her diabolical and satanic idea of who should live and who should die straight from hell. She was possessed. And when I talked about her, now, 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 Murray Stopes, whose clinics are all over Africa, performing abortions and promoting abortions, and all over Ireland, where my O'Toole ancestors come from, shamefully, they've legalized it. Shamefully, they've rejected God, the God of St. Patrick. I'm ashamed of it. I'm ashamed of it. And I'm begging you Africans, don't do what we've done. Don't do what we've done. We're dying. We're dead. We have no future. They are witches. And when I brought this up in the group, the Pro Family Africa group, I was rebuked <laughs> by Dr. Wahome, who said, no, no, don't be so mean to uh, Margaret Singer and Marie Stopes. Don't call them witches. It's not good to call them witches. Uh, the poor ladies, you're being too mean to them. Let me tell you something. That is the spirit that will cause if you follow it, <laughs> if you follow the model that Dr. Wahome is uh, laying out for you there, that will cause you to repeat the mistakes of America and you also will die demographically, okay? You will lose your future. You will be overruled by Muslims and ultimately God will destroy you because God is not tolerating people who, who allow witches to overrule them. Dr. Wahome, a few weeks later, I confronted him about that. I said, I said, um, no, that's not true. She wasn't a poor lady. She knew what she was doing. She was demon possessed. She had Satan in her mind. She may have been, I'm no expert on possession, but she may have been perfectly possessed, meaning that there was at some point no distinction between the devil possessing her, moving her to kill uh, billions now, billions around the world who are dead because of because of the conduit, the work that Margaret Sanger and her little mini me Marie Stopes, who admired her and was the the Margaret Sanger of the UK, okay, all right, of the United Kingdom, and by extension through the British Empire, extended that lie of eugenics, that satanic genocidal lie, all over Africa. They were not victims. They were not, oh, poor lady. Dr. Wahomey is full of nonsense. And then they chose him very foolishly, KCPF, the Kenya Christian Professionals uh, Forum, which was founded, I believe, by Dr. Jean Kagia, whom you interviewed recently. We'll be talking about that uh, soon. But the bottom line is all I can do is fight at this point, because I know that any attempt to pretend like this, these people are not utterly satanic, is inviting these vampires, for that's what they are, blood-sucking vampires, Mary Stopes, Margaret Sanger. They must be resisted with the power of the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the crucifix. And now, am I saying that this cross that I'm wearing, this little piece of wood and metal on a string, that it has superpowers. No, I'm not saying that. This is a reminder. It reminds me that God was not ashamed to become man in the womb of a woman, to become a fetus, to become an embryo in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And that God was crucified as a man, the God-man, to destroy the power of death. 
And so I invoke it in Jesus' name against the powers behind the witches, Mary Stopes and Margaret Sanger from the USA, who supported Adolf Hitler in his eugenics program, which he later canceled, I've been told. But Adolf Hitler at his worst, at his worst, and the Third Reich in Germany, at their worst, were being influenced by the likes of Mary Stopes and Margaret Sanger. Make no mistake, these people were conscious. Now, are there people, were, they were conscious, they were conscious of the evil they were doing. Are there people working for these institutions who are not conscious, who are not aware, who are not cognizant of what they are doing and who don't realize what they're doing? As Jesus said, as he hung upon the cross, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Am I judging them all? God forbid. No. But I'm telling you, at the heart of it, Mary Stopes, Margaret Sanger, I'm telling anyone who works for them, who thinks they're doing good, there are people in Africa, in Kenya, I've met them face to face, hundreds of people, thousands maybe, tens of thousands, who actually think that Mary Stopes is a Catholic saint. Okay, that I, people think that, people think that. There's a lot of ignorance. Don't underestimate the ignorance. I'm here to tell you now, tell everyone you know, they are demons. Margaret Sanger was a demon in the flesh. She's irredeemable. She's in hell. Mary Stopes, Dr. Wahome, is in hell. Your prayers do her no good. I wish it were otherwise, <laughs> but I care more about her victims. So Dr. Wahome went before the Kenyan Senate and the three contemporary versions of uh, Mary Stopes were there. A lady, an MP called um, Millie, I believe it was Millie Othiambo, or another another Millie, there's two Millies, uh, and uh, Esther Pasaris, uh, MP Esther Pasaris, and Senator Susan Kahika from Nakuru County. And they were belligerent. They were badgering Dr. Wahomey as he tried to talk about the, the French Revolution. I may include some of the footage here. And because Dr. Wahomey doesn't understand evil when it's right there in his face, in the face of their badgering, they had more virility than him. And when he should have stood up and exposed them for the wicked, genocidal witches that they are, Instead, he capitulated, he stood up and he said, Honorable Susan Kahika, I have seen your intentions and I have seen your motivations and they are good. And I called him on it publicly, or at least in the group. And he blocked me and he's blocked me ever since. The man's a fool. I'm sorry, I don't want it to be this way. I've lived too long, I've seen too much to, to beat around the bush. The man's a fool. He needs to grow up. He's a sophomore. Sometimes he speaks words of pure golden wisdom. Okay, I, I have no problem acknowledging that I've learned from him. That's where the word sophomore comes from. From Sophia, wisdom, moral, moron, fool. The man's a wise fool. So I you know, Kenyans, let me tell you, Wavinia, I don't mean to offend you, but you Kenyans are a little bit too polite. And sometimes it's your saving grace, but sometimes it, if you don't wake up <laughs> to the fact that there are devils in the house and, and, and this politeness which precedes this, this insincere politeness, <laughs> this politeness to a fault where someone comes talking about uh, raping your mother and instead of beating the snot out of them, you begin to negotiate with them and you continue smiling. That's the spirit of Kenyans that I've noticed, <laughs> having uh, a Kenyan, been and having been Kenya. visiting Kenya for um, many years and interacting with Kenya and loving Kenya, loving, this comes from a spirit of love, but I've noticed a fault among Kenyans that Kenyans will be polite and subservient <laughs> in their attitude, even when people are in fact 
acting as the way that these senators, Kenyan senators and MPs are acting as agents of the people who want to kill all of you and destroy and enslave whoever might be left. That's what I'm telling you. Is that you can read all the details at projectc.com, read the article by Regan Othiambo, The Racist Roots of Marie Stopes, read it there. But I'm not going to mince words. I'm calling a spade a spade. These people want to kill you, and the only way, there's only one way out of this, because they have no end of funding. They have until God destroys the dollar hegemony, the power of the US dollar, and God will do it eventually. But meanwhile, meanwhile, you're being tested. You're being tested to see whether you love this material world more than you love God, Africans, Kenyans, Ethiopians. And now speaking of Ethiopia, Ethiopia set the example. This is how, and now listen to me, this is key. This is how, Africa and Africans can overrule all the corruption and all the confusion through something very distinctly African. Not that it doesn't exist anywhere else, but Africans are known for it. Called street justice. Street justice can overrule all the corruption. What do I mean? When Toto Tours, the gay sodomite tour agency coming out of Chicago, threatened to bring their sodomite-only tour to Ethiopia. The people of Ethiopia, in spite of the, the corruption of their government, in spite of all the financial and fiscal ties that, that make their elected officials want to please at the outside forces, the people overruled all of that by standing up and sending a very clear message to Toto Tours that you're not safe when you come to Ethiopia. And th they did that through every possible online um, social media venue including the, the videos, the very innocent videos on my own YouTube channel, um, where we were telling Toto Tours not to go to Ethiopia, but we were not threatening anyone. But that didn't stop the Ethiopian people from, from communicating in the comment section on our videos and all over the internet that the people, if they brought the, the ungodly abomination of sodomy into the country of Ethiopia to visit their holy sites with a sodomite tour, those people would die. I didn't say that, and I'm not saying that, but the Ethiopian people said so in their comments. What am I telling you? I'm telling you that the final check and balance against the, the abortion genocide, <laughs> against all the, the, the sodomy genocide, the gender confusion, the sexual confusion coming from the West, call it what you may, the final check and balance that Africans have. Don't underestimate yourselves. Don't underestimate yourselves. You have that power just as when you find, uh, I know how it is in Africa, you find a man who has raped a child. The police will never find that man. Sin Dio. The police will never find that man. They'll find him. They'll find his burned and charred body after he's been stoned, after he's been hanged, after he's been burned to a cinder. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it. I've seen it. You Africans, you know how to do street justice. I'm not fomenting it. I'm not telling you to do it. But what I'm explaining to you is that that is the final check and balance that you have as Africans against Mary Stopes, against Margaret Sanger. I'm talking about the individuals here. Against the spirit that was in those individual women. They appeared to be women. They were demons in the flesh. Demons in the flesh. And instead of capitulating to them the way Dr. Wahomey did, 
Don't imitate him. Imitate Dr. Karanja. Confront them. Call them witches. Call them genocides. Tell them what they are. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed to use the very categories that God created in the Bible. God said in his word, Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Was God confused? <laughs> Was God hallucinating? No. Witches are real. They exist. And one way of defining them, it's not coming from my imagination. It's coming from a reality. Hippocrates had an oath. He said, I will not give a woman a pessary to induce an abortion. So when they do so, claiming to be doctors in the Hippocratic tradition, in fact, they have left the 2,300-year-old Hippocratic tradition. So what do we call them now? <laughs> That's the problem. Now, what do we call them? If they're no longer doctors, what we've been calling doctors for 2,300 years, what do we call them? I'm telling you, and I'm not yelling because I've lost my temper. I'm not. I'm yelling because I, I don't know how to get through to you. I know you know this, Wavinia, but I'm talking to the pro-lifers. I'm talking to all Africans, anyone who will listen to me. They are witches. They must be physically resisted by law enforcement. They must be arrested. And you people know what to do. African people are the final check and balance on earth against these people, barring a miracle from God. And God does miracles. <laughs> but if we force God to intervene, a lot of people may die. God has put you there to comprehend the nature of this attack and respond accordingly. Respond by resisting these devils, these Marie Stopes devils. These Margaret Sanger devils must be resisted effectively, or you too, don't think you're immune. <laughs> you too will be surrounded by lies, as we are here in America today as we're about to lose our republic, unless God intervenes miraculously. Confusion, lies, confusion, death. Do you want lies, confusion, and death to be the future of your children? Well, then repent. Repent. Uh, Ann Kyoko, Dr. Karanja, and others stood uh, in front of the Senate, and they called on um, Senator Susan Kihika, who is promoting this abortion bill. They called on her to repent. And then Dr. Wahome completely undermined them by going to the Senate <laughs> and, 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 and saying, Oh, Senator, Honorable Susan Kehika, I have seen your motivations, and I have seen your intentions, and they are good. Well, <laughs> if her intentions are good, and if her motivations are good, you stupid son of a bitch, <laughs> then she has nothing to repent of. Nothing to repent of. She just needs to change her tactics and become more informed. Do not act. Do not act like all these people are lacking in is knowledge. Like we simply have to um, give them more information. And then they'll say, oh, I was making a mistake. No, the moment that Dr. Karan, uh, Dr. Wahome told Honorable Kihika that her intentions were good was months after she had already been very clearly informed. Uh, she knew exactly, there was no question that she knew exactly what she was doing and had already for weeks been lying, weeks and months been lying about the bill and going to her constituents. I know my mother-in-law is one of the um, uh, Jubilee Party members in Nakuru who met with Susan Kihika and tried to talk to, with her about this and she lied to them, to my mother-in-law and to her friends um, and pretended like the bill, the Reproductive Health Care Act, was something other than it was. So she was already deeply, deeply into the disinformation campaign. And this stupid son of a bitch, Dr. Uh, Wahome, okay, why am I, okay, why am I calling a son of a bitch? Because I'm not insulting his mother. God bless his dear mother. I'm, I'm using the word to, to 
underscore to you that the man is leading you with all the sweetness. And, and he tells people like me <laughs> that we're lacking in charity. Oh, you're not charitable enough to Susan Kihika. You're not charitable enough to um, Margaret Sanger. You're not charitable enough to Marie Stopes. God damn it, they are genocides. They're killing your people. I'm offending you on purpose. Wake up. Wake up. Fight them. Tooth and nail. Don't whisper sweet nothings <laughs> in their ear, Dr. Wahomey. Instead, imitate Dr. Karanja and his Senate testimony. Speak the truth. Call them witches. You are at war. Wake up. Wake up. And don't misquote Jesus. Judge not. Jesus was speaking to a patriarchal, um, uh, uh, hypocritical uh, Pharisees who were enforcing the law so uh, hypocritically and so scrupulously and beyond what God ever intention, intended outside the spirit of the law that they, were, that they were not even giving anyone any chance to repent. Well, these people don't want to repent. <laughs> Some of them may repent like Dr. Bernard Nathanson, and I, I want that to happen. Let it happen. Let's share the gospel with them. But in reality, these people are not trying to repent. These people need the ministry of the law. Please it's just me. like if, you, if find you find someone raping an innocent child, you're not going to open up the Bible and start reading John 3.16. Oh, oh, you're raping that innocent child. Oh, you sinner. God so loved the world that he gave his only... No, you're going to intervene. You're going to use whatever force is necessary to stop the person from raping the innocent child. And anyone who comes to you saying he's a Christian, saying, oh, stop using force, is a son of a bitch. What am I saying? Why am I using this offensive word? I'm telling you that when someone who seems to be a man doesn't want you to become angry and forceful in the face of babies being killed or raped, and in the face of genocide, his mother made a mistake. There was something wrong with her. The values that she conveyed to him when he was a baby and when he was growing up were defective. Sorry, <laughs> I'm telling you that. They were more like, in fact, I'm insulting dogs when I say that because a bitch is a female dog. <laughs> and, and there are dogs, there are female dogs who have more concern, like the one I remember from years ago who uh, saved... Uh, a little baby who was thrown away in the trash. So you'll find a dog sometimes that has more concern for human life. What am I telling you? The pro-life movement has been infiltrated by pacifists, and pacifism is not sweet. It's not nice. It's not, it's not sugary, sugary. <laughs> it leads to and it facilitates genocide. If you want a future, rise up like the Ethiopians and resist by whatever means are necessary these people who are genociding you you can still do it repent do not allow marie stopes and do not allow margaret sanger to poison your wives poison your daughters poison your mother and slaughter your children and then you'll have a future and christendom you will inherit christendom the West has dropped the ball. <laughs> We're the big sister. The big sister who fell into a life of prostitution. And now the little sister, you peoples who we colonized, are looking at us now. Instead of looking back at your African traditions, which are, which are more bi biblical, honestly, and instead of looking back at... at the, the, the British common law that we gave before our apostasy, which is more biblical, at least makes a good faith attempt that you've inherited in your penal codes to, to uh, British common law made a good faith attempt, not being perfect ever, but made a good faith attempt to enforce law and reconcile law to the will of God and to the biblical law and to morality. Now, instead of looking back at that, you're being tempted now to follow the Western world 
like slaves, <laughs> into a new perverse neocolonialism that only ends in death. I'm begging you. I know I don't know what else to do. I've used the hardest words. I've offended everyone. <laughs> what do I do now? I'm begging you. I'm instructing you as one of the few men left in Western society who still cares about the law of God. I'm telling you the death and destruction that you are witnessing now and will witness as the West collapses demographically and in every other way. This disintegration is the result of the refusal to enforce the law of God. Yes, the law must be tempered with mercy, but the fact is that these genocidal witches must be arrested. Do whatever it takes to arrest them in Jesus' name. The first person to oppose once you point it out to us. Okay. In the bill, not in ICPD, yes. not in the, a document in... Right. Um, in but, uh, the, by the, I don't know whether you said the, no. uh, we were left or I don't know which one, because you must also be conscious of our laws that you refer to. What does the Children Act say about some of these things? What does the Sexual Offenses Act say about children, about people engaging? You've just said it's 18. Below 18, there is no sex. We have been opposing people trying to reduce the minimum age, because we don't want our children engaging in sex. So tell yeah. us, within the framework of the Sexual Offences Act, within the framework of the Children Act, within the framework of the Treaty Making and Ratification Act, how these have been imported in our law, because they've not. So let us be factual. I, I, I want to... Dr. Home, let's I just proceed to... now to the yes. next part, because time I, is also running I, I, and I we have to... others who haven't spoken, so keep moving. Yes, thank you very much. But that is it very is. well noted, Honorable. Yes, the, the term sexual rights is the term that can be abused to import all those things that I have said. And, and that uh, is in the bill. Uh, my, my prayer, my prayer to this House and to you, Honorable uh, Senator Kihika, is that I see your passion, I see your intention, and it is a good one. But if we do not orientate this bill to be family friendly, then it is going to be a major problem. So my request is that uh, we withdraw the bill and go back to the drawing table. We'll be able to discuss some of these things and come out with something that would be good for the country. Thank you. Hey, habari Susan. Habari Susan Kihika. Hey, habari. Sasa, Bill Gates, George Soros. Habari kani? Wewe. Good work, Reproductive Healthcare Abortion Act. We are very proud of you. UNFPA is proud of you. IPPF is proud of you. Marie Stopes International is very proud of you, Susan. And for a reward, Damu Yawatoto. Ndio, nataka kunyua. Ngai. Na mimi? Nataka kunyua sasa? Mimi? Nipe. Nipe damu. Kapana. Esther Pasares. Kay. Enough, Enough, my, my daughters. daughters. First, First, we must, we must legalize, legalize abortion, abortion in Kenya. Kenya. There, will, there be will be enough, enough blood, blood for all. all.